All right, thanks for watching. And you might say, whoa, what happened here? Well, I want to try the whiteboard a little bit for more legibility, but I'm sure you've been waiting for this. Well, there you go. <laughs> Too small to break. But anyway, so welcome to the third part of my linear algebra extravaganza. And today I will talk about the Gram-Schmidt process. And what is this Gram-Schmidt process? Well, remember that orthogonal sets or orthogonal bases are very nice. And so, which also begs the question, is there any way of turning any basis into an orthogonal basis? And in fact, we can do that. And the cool thing is, it, it just takes ideas from the previous video about uh, orthogonal projections. So, let's do a concrete example. Find an orthonormal, so, and I'll explain what that is, well, basis for the following set for W, which is the span of the following three vectors, U1 u2, u3, where u1 is 1, 0, 1, 0. u2, with or without u, okay, it's 0, 1, 1, 1. And u3 is minus 1, 0, 0, 1. What does that mean? So w, it's the span of those three vectors. So in some sense, it's all the information that's contained by those three vectors. And the idea is as follows. So we have those three vectors. They can point at any direction. Let's say u1, u2, u3. And what we want to do th with that is we want to turn this set into an orthonormal set. In other words, what we want to do is we want to perpendicularize this set in some sense. So with this Gram-Schmidt process, we'll be able to turn those three ugly vectors into something that's very nice. Something like that. W1, W2, W3, with the property that each of those vectors are perpendicular. And not only that, each of the vectors will have a length one. So, it, as I said, it's a nice way of perpendicularizing the vectors and of really turning any basis into, if you want, the standard basis. Because those are just all the properties we need for the standard basis. <coughs> okay, and how are we going to achieve that? First of all, forget about the word orthonormal for a second. Let's first find an orthogonal set. For this, uh, um, for this vector space. As I said, first, find an orthogonal basis. Then the orthonormal thing will be very quick, I promise you. Orthogonal basis. So we want to find the v1, v2, v3 orthogonal. but with the same span as our set W. So that's very important because it's easy to produce orthogonal sets just through the standard unit vectors. But here we want to have an orthogonal set with the same span as W. And well, there's nothing we can really do. Let's just start with something. So step one, well, our first vector, v1, let, let's just let it be u1. So let v1 equals to u1 equals to 1, 0, 1, 0. And of course, I erased the previous part, but once you have your vector u1 here, just cross it out from your list because you will never use it again, actually. 
because from now on we work with V1. Okay, and what's the second step? So here, as I said, we start with V1. V1 equals to U1. And as I said, we want to find some vector that's perpendicular to V1. Well, let's see what other vectors we have. So we do have the vector u2, right, which is 0, 1, 1, 1. And now remember from the previous video, a very nice way of finding a vector orthogonal to this one is or, with the concept of orthogonal projections. So let me just quickly recall, in case you have not seen the other video, if you have a line L, and a vector x, there's a very easy way of squishing x onto that line. It's called this orthogonal projection x hat. And then from there, you can produce a vector orthogonal to that line, namely x minus x hat. So this vector is x minus x hat. In fact, x minus x hat is perpendicular to the line. Well, here we have the exact same issue. Right? We have a line here spanned by u1. We have our vector u2. So all we really need to do is to construct u2 hat. And our answer for v2 will be you know, x minus x hat, which is u2 minus u2 hat. And so now let's try to achieve this. u2 hat. Now, remember the definition of orthogonal projection? We want a vector that's in this line, so it has to be a multiple of v1. So something times v1. And to find that something, all you do is you hug the vector u2 with your v1. So it's u2 dot v1 over v1 dot v1 times v1. And then if you do that, you have this calculation. So u2 is 0, 1, 1, 1 dotted with 1, 0, 1, 0 divided by, so this vector you repeat it actually four times. So 1, 0, 1, 0, dotted with 1, 0, 1, 0. This huge number is just a number, and you multiply it by the vector, 1, 0, 1, 0. And if you calculate that, you get 1 half times 1, 0, 1, 0, which is write it here, uh, 1 half, 0, 1 half, 0. And now it's very important that you leave the vector like that. Do not rescale it because you may get, end up getting a vector that's not on this line. So right now that doesn't quite work, but in a second we can rescale. So. What we did so far is good. We found u2 hat, which is 1 half, 0, 1 half, 0. And now, just to construct v2, you just do u2 minus u2 hat. So let's do that. Therefore, so v2 is u2 minus u2 hat. And that's 0, 1, 1, 1 minus 1 half, 0, 1 half, 0 which becomes minus one half, one, one half, one. And now you do have a vector on this line. And the nice thing about lines is that you can multiply something and you're still on this line, at least if it starts at the origin. So now you're allowed to rescale. So maybe let's multiply this by two and you get Minus 1, 2, 1, 2. 
Wonderful. So you started with u1, right? And then you, now you calculated a vector that's perpendicular to u1. So it's great. So you have this situation here, v1, and then we have v2 that's perpendicular to it. So we are on the right track. And by the way, two things. Now that you use u2, you can literally cross it out off of your list. And I suggest that, otherwise you might be tempted to use it again. And, and now we just want to continue. So we have v1, we have v2, and now let's try to find a vector that's perpendicular to both of them. So here's the last, third step. So again, the picture is as follows. We have v1, we have v2, they are perpendicular, and the idea is now, well, we want to, you know, given the last piece of information that we have, let's find a vector perpendicular to those two. So, and really, the only thing that we can still use is, is u3. And now, we want to do the same spiel again with the orthogonal projections. v1 and v2, well, they span a plane. And all we have to do is the following. First, calculate the orthogonal projection of u3 on that plane. And then the answer is plain simple. It, the answer then will be v3 is u3 minus u3 half. Because precisely, v3 will be perpendicular to the plane and therefore, in particular, perpendicular to v1 and v2. So now, let us do that. So, u3 half, in this case, again, remember what I did with orthogonal projections. u3 half has to be a vector in that plane, therefore, a linear combination of v1 and v2 and all you do is take u3 and you hug it with v1. So u3 dotted with v1 over v1 dotted with v1. And u3 dotted with v2 over v2 dotted with v2. Let's do this nasty calculation. So we have minus 1, 0, 0, 1 dotted with 1, 0, 1, 0 over 1, 0, 1, 0, dotted with 1, 0, 1, 0, times 1, 0, 1, 0, plus minus 1, 0, 0, 1, dotted with minus 1, 2, 1, 2, over minus 1, 2, 1, 2, dotted with minus 1, 2, 1, 2, times Minus 1, 2, 1, 2. So, by the way, do you see how nice it is that I rescaled it? You know, otherwise, we would have nasty fractions. And then, after the dust settles, we have the following. Equals to, so minus 1 half times 1, 0, 1, 0 plus 3 tenths of minus 1, 2, 1, 2. It's very intense, right? Because we have 1 over 10. And in the end, you get minus 4 fifths, 3 fifths, minus 1 fifth, and 3 fifths. Again, at this point, do not rescale your vector because, again, it would change the position of your vector. But once we found u3 hat, remember the answer is just u3 minus u3 hat. So we get v3 is u3 minus u3 half. You can calculate this to be minus 1 fifth, minus 3 fifths, 1 fifth, and 2 fifths. And if you like, rescale it to minus 1, minus 3, 1, 2. And therefore, we did find our orthogonal basis. Namely, it's the following illusion. This set, v1, v2, v3, which is 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 2, 1, 2, and 
minus 1, minus 3, 1, 2, is an orthogonal basis, perpendicular basis, for W. And in fact, if you'd like, you can always check if it's, you know, indeed orthogonal. So, yeah. That's a nice thing, okay? And we're almost done. Well, uh, <laughs> How do you find an orthonormal basis? And in case you don't know, orthonormal means each vector has length one. Turns out it's the easiest thing, you know, easiest step of them all. So step four, normalize. And here's a cute fact. In fact, let me use my red pen. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> black pen, red pen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> fact, if you take a vector and you divide by its length, automatically this has length 1. Okay, unless it's a zero vector or something. Which means that for each of those three vectors, we just have to divide by the length. Let w1 be v1 divided by its length, which is 1, 0, 1, 0. Well, and the length of this is square root of 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared, which is 1 over root 2, which is 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2, 0. And then w2, which is, I have to do my taxes soon, <laughs> v2 over length of v2, which is 1 over root 10, minus 1, 2, 1, 2, which is minus 1 over root 10, 2 over root 10, 1 over root 10, and 2 over root 10. And lastly, W3, which is V3 over length of V3, and it's 1 over root 15, of this vector, minus 1, minus 3, 1, 2, which is minus 1 over root 15, and minus 3 over root 15, horrible roots, okay, 1 over root 15, and 2 over root 15. And of course, do not rescale it, because the point was we chose the scaling exactly for it to have length 1, and then once you have that, you get W1, W2, W3 is an orthonormal basis, O-N basis for W. It's on, right, because it's orthonormal, which means that those three vectors are perpendicular and each of them has length one. And Remember in the first video, I convinced you hopefully why it's so great to have, you know, orthogonal or orthonormal sets, which, you know, which makes this great because we're able to construct, you know, explicit orthonormal bases. All right, so if you like this linear algebra extravaganza, and there's more to come, and if you like math in general, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.